Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel. Hope all is well. And it's Tuesday night at the fights from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have two heavyweight bouts. The main event, 10 rounds. Luis Firpo, the mad bull from Argentina, taking on Neon Leon Spinks. But up first... The giant, Jess Willard, takes on the son of Smokin' Joe Frazier, Marvis Frazier, 10 rounds heavyweights. Legends of Boxing. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. And now, to ringside, we go. So up first, it will be Jess Willard and Marvis Frazier, 10 rounds heavyweights, and then the main event from Argentina, Luis Firpo, the man who knocked Jack Dempsey out of the ring and nearly took the heavyweight title in round one. Takes on Leon Spinks, former heavyweight champion. Marvis Frazier and Jess Willard have entered the ring, so let's go to the preview of that fight. Jess Willard from Potawatomi, Kansas, the Potawatomi Giant. I don't think I pronounced that properly, but that's what he was called. Uh, overall record, 22-5-1 with 20 KOs. Took the heavyweight title by knocking out Jack Johnson in Cuba. I think it was Havana, Cuba. Marvis Frazier, and he's making his debut in our universe on Legends of Boxing. Marvis Frazier, 19-2 and two with eight stoppages from the city of Brotherly Love, Philadelphia, PA, son of Smoking Joe Frazier, is 2-0 and oh in our universe. He has defeated Mark Gastineau. I think it was Butterbean or Peter McNeely. He's 2-0. and oh. Uh, won by unanimous decision. It was uh, Butterbean. I'm positive of it. He decisioned Butterbean and he TKO'd Mark Gastineau. It's a big step up for Marvis, taking on a former heavyweight champion, Jess Willard. Willard is a pressure fighter. So is Marvis. And Marvis has a 6 for control against pressure fighters. Willard a 5. So Marvis will have a slight advantage of 1, I do believe. Endurance will go to Willard, 25 to 22. Power will go to Willard, 6 to 2. And Willard's chin will stay at a 9 because Marvis Frazier's power is not a 6 or better. It is a 2. And... Marvis Frazier's chin and will will stay the same because the control factor for Willard is not higher than Marvis Frazier. So let's go to ringside. Ten rounds, heavyweights. The prelim before the main event, Firpo Spinks. It's Willard Frazier from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. As always, our referee is Dave Gardner. see Marvis Frazier's control is a 9. The lower the number, the better. Jess Willard's control number is a 10. Willard fighting out of the red corner. Frazier out of the blue corner. Referee Gardner brings them to the center of the ring. There are no, chief quest no questions for the chief seconds. Referee Gardner says, touch gloves. Willard and Frazier do. Come out fighting. We await the bell for round number 1. And here it is. Marvis Frazier is putting the pressure on Jess Willard. Willard, Frazier gets inside. It's a big combination, four-punch salvo. He digs the left hook to the body, then the right hook to the body. Comes up with the right hand. It is a looping right hand against the very tall Jess Willard. Nails him with that and then hits him with a left hook. Frazier continues to try to apply the pressure. Willard keeping him at distance with the jab. And he missed the upper, he missed the shots there. He pawed with the jab and missed with the right cross. 
Willard can never fight elusive. He fights outside z a 1 through 14, inside 15, and then 16 through tw uh, 20 pressure. Marvis Frazier never fights elusive. 1 through 7 outside, 8 through 18 inside, 19 and 20 pressure. So a good start for Frazier. Ooh, Frazier goes low. The Frazier corner is complaining that Willard pushed his head down. Referee Gardner asked Willard if he's all right. He says yes. And Willard goes to the belt line, holding Frazier and hitting him on the belt line. Referee Gardner lets that go. Frazier applies pressure. Misses with a right hand and a left hook to the head. Willard counters with a good uppercut. It was a right uppercut as he held Frazier in place. That's his money punch, is that uppercut. Frazier comes in and he bangs that body left, right. Trying to wear down the big Jess Willard. Willard looks to come back. He misses again with the jab. He doesn't really throw the jab. He paws with it. And then he tries to land that right and he missed both punches. Frazier, minute to go. Gets in tight and he bangs away at the body again and then lands a good crisp right to the jaw of Jess Willard. Willard felt that under 30 seconds ago, and it's Marvis punching at the bell. He looked like Papa Joe. Double left hook, he dug the first left to the rib cage of the giant Jess Willard, and then up to the head with the looping left, snapping the giant's head. D. Scott Howard has joined us here in Las Vegas. D. Scott says, in my Glory Days boxing universe, Marvis Frazier was DQ'd in the third for biting Tex Cobb. Joe was mortified in the corner. Oh my God, that's awesome. So we give round number one to Marvis Frazier. Willard down to 22 endurance points. Frazier 18. Here's round two. And Frazier gets inside. And Frazier lands with a left to the body and then put, pokes an uppercut through the guard of Jess Willard. But Willard was able to absorb some of that. Willard goes to the belt line again as he holds Frazier in place. Oh, a good toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange by both. Frazier gets in tight, and Marvis again uses that left hook to the body and the right hook to the body. He's trying to chop down the tree known as Jess Willard. Looping right hand gets in for Frazier. Left uppercut, I mean a right uppercut, excuse me, for Willard in that toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Frazier... Gets inside, lands the double left hook, one to the body, one to the head, and that really is affecting Willard. Willard blinking, backing up. Willard continues to paw with the jab. He does not throw a good jab. It's a range finder for possibly the right hand or the right uppercut. Frazier gets past the pawing jab, and he digs hard to the body. Three-punch salvo, left, right, left, continues to work the large torso of Jess Willard. Willard misses with a jab in the right hand. Good job by Marvis. No retaliation though. 30 seconds to go and both fighters throw at the bell. Grazing shots for both. Both overhand right for Frazier. Grazing uppercut for Willard. We give round two once again to Frazier. Willard's endurance down to 19. Frazier's endurance down to 15. At ringside, joining D. Scott Howard. Sox, Arizona. Check out that wonderful channel for all your Boston Red Sox needs and Boston Celtics needs. He does a wonderful live call with the chat for both Red Sox and Celtics. And, of course, we have our very good friend, Steeler fan 1933, Matt. Round three, scheduled for 10. Referee Gardner says fight at the... Oh, and they smack heads as Frazier tried to get inside. Willard tried to tie him up. They smack heads, but both fighters seem okay. Referee Gardner takes a look and lets the bout continue. And Frazier lands on the belt line. The Willard corner complaining, but referee Gardner says you're pulling his head down. Willard looks to set up that uppercut. He cannot, but he does land a chopping right hand. And Frazier has a minor abrasion. No, no, I see blood. It is a cut underneath the left eye. So Willard draws first blood on Frazier. Both fighters faint but don't throw. You can see there Marvis trying to land that looping right hand. Again, Marvis 
feints but doesn't throw. Willard just backs away. He stays at distance. Willard paws with the jab and nails Frazier as he holds him in place, coming forward with the right uppercut. And Frazier is down! Marcus is down! Willard goes to the neutral corner to count. Has reached four. Frazier gets up. He'll take the mandatory eight. Frazier looks a bit woozy. He still looks woozy. Can Willard take advantage of this? And Willard goes for the kill as he unloads a wild combination ending with a right uppercut. And Frazier is back into the ropes and hurt. Willard continues to pummel away and he lands another hard uppercut and digs to the body and back to the head. Frazier trying to get off the ropes. Willard keeps him there and he lands a glancing cross. A huge round for Jess Willard. He held Frazier in place and he nailed him with that right uppercut. Not necessarily a clean tactic, but if you can get away with it, by God you will. Lennox Lewis got away with it quite well in many a fight. So Frazier goes down and they are working on that cut underneath his eye and trying to restore his confidence also. That is definitely a 10-8 round, possibly a 10-7 round. We give it 10-8 to Willard, so we have it even after three first two rounds of Frazier and then the 10-8 round to Willard let's go to the ringside score for the first time he also has it even 28-28 our two scorecards are purely unofficial Highlight Lie Heyday has joined us at ringside here in Las Vegas Nevada check out that wonderful YouTube channel and subscribe such as with Sox Arizona well they've done the best they could on Frazier's eye and, and restoring his confidence. We prepare for round four. There's the bell, Jess Willard. A lot of eagerness to get off his stool, and Frazier meets him at ring center. He gets inside. He get easily gets past the pawing jab, and he digs hard to the body again. Left, right, left. Continues to work the torso of giant Jess Willard, and Frazier again lands the left hook to the body. Willard paws, 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 and lands the right uppercut. It was grazing. Frazier was able to duck away from some of it. Again, Willard lands a cross this time. Not really effective with that cross. His jab is, again, a pawing jab. Frazier gets underneath and digs to the body. Right hook, left hook. Good job by Marvis. Marvis gets inside, and this time he faints with the left of the body and lands a looping right cross to the jaw of Jess Willard, then follows it up with a left. Frazier tries to get inside. Willard ties him up and again lands to the belt line. Referee Gardner lets it go. Under a minute to go here in round four. Here comes Jess Willard. He's able to hold Frazier in place on the inside and nail him with that right uppercut. You can hear, hear Papa Joe from Frazier's corner screaming, don't let him tie you up. Bang the body, Marvis. Bang the body. And that's what just Marvis did. He digs with the left hook to the body and then a right hook to the head of Jess Willard, and Willard goes very slowly back to his corner. We give that round to Marvis Frazier. Willard down to 14 endurance points. Frazier down to seven. We're coming up on the halfway point. Round five, main event, Furpo and Spinks still to come. It's the Mad Bull from Argentina, Luis Furpo against Neon Leon Spinks. Ten rounds, heavyweights. That's the main event, but we have a quite a doozy here in the prelim. Round five, Willard Marvis Frazier. Willard has control from the outside, and he uh, that was a good jab there, and he lands a solid right cross. That was the best one-two by Willard. Frazier absorbed it pretty well. Frazier gets inside. Frazier bangs a left hook to the body, and then an uppercut grazes the nostril of Willard. Willard backs up again, pawing with that jab, and now he throws it with a little more authority, and he lands the cross. So Willard really setting down with that jab and the right hand. Willard in a rhythm. He's sensing that Frazier is wearing out. Willard is a big man. Frazier is a smallish type of heavyweight. And Willard again! This time he paws, then pokes with the jab, but it is scoring. No right hand, though no right hand followed those two jabs. Frazier ducks underneath and bangs away with a right hook, left hook to the body of Jess Willard. Frazier again stays in tight, and there he goes, banging away with the hooks. Left, right again to the body. 
toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but Frazier got the better of it. And just as I say that, Willard throws an uppercut, snapping Frazier's head. Crowd enjoying this bout here in Las Vegas. Under a minute to go, round five. This round is up for grabs, and Frazier digs to the body again, listening to Papa Joe. Work the body, Marvis. Work the body, and the head will fall. 30 seconds to go, and now it's the giant Jess Willard with a grazing jab at the bell. Willard kind of wants Frazier to get in, but not punch. He wants to hold him in place and hit him with that right uppercut, the uppercut that dropped Marvis. We give that round even. Willard loses three endurance points. He's down to 11. Frazier loses four. He's down to three. Frazier breathing a little heavily in his corner. SGJ Jamie has joined us here at ringside in Las Vegas, Nevada. SGJ Jamie says, I just did a fight for my universe with Willard. How did that turn out? Who did he fight? As D. Scott Howard is saying hello to one and all. So we gave that round even. Again, our scorecard's unofficial. They gave that round to Frazier. I have to be honest with you, I was leaning Frazier, but I gave it even. The ringside score has Frazier up 48-46. The only round that he gave to Willard was the knockdown round in round three. Frazier was down for a six count. Did take the mandatory eight. Here we go, round number six, scheduled for ten. As referee Gardner issues the fighters to the ring center, Willard uses... That was a nice combination by Jess Willard. He threw the jab, the right hand, and this time a left uppercut. A three-punch combination. Grazing punches, but they landed. Frazier trying to get inside and work. Willard keeping at distance. Frazier ducks away from the wild punches of the giant from Kansas. Frazier now gets under the pawing jab. Throws a wide, looping right hand that Willard parries away. Frazier again gets in tight and he bangs that body. Left, right to the body and a left uppercut that grazes Willard. He's really got a reach for that Willard chin. Willard establishing distance. And now Frazier gets in tight and Willard holds him and he nails him with the right uppercut. And Frazier's in serious trouble. Frazier's knees buckled. Frazier wobbles backwards. And here comes Jess Willard. Willard... Pawing with the jab, right hand, left hand, right uppercut, and Frazier pushes Willard away. Amazing, but Frazier's still on those ropes. Frazier looks to get off those ropes, and he does. He does. He threw a jab on a right hand, winged an uppercut. That grazed Willard. Action towards ring centered. Willard again with that long jab, a range fighter. Now he nails uh, Frazier with that jab. Under 30 seconds to go. Toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. Both men land. There's the bell. That is a Jess Willard round. He had Frazier badly hurt. But Frazier stood up to it. Willard down to nine endurance points. Frazier has gone fatigued. He's breathing quite heavily. His control has gone up to a 10. His defense has gone down. And his power has gone down. So defense and power out of one. Marvis Frazier will have to out-hustle Jess Willard to take a decision most likely here. Willard still has his punching power of a six. SGJ Jamie at ringside in his universe says in the prior comment he used Willard and he fought Joe Frazier. It was a wild battle, both knocking each other down, but Frazier ultimately knocked out Willard. Quite exciting. Thank you for sharing that, Jamie. Ringside scorer gave that round to Willard. He still has Frazier up 57-56. We have it dead even. We have the fight dead even. Because we gave round 5 10-10. And we obviously gave round 6 to Willard. Here we go. Actually, Willard might be up on a point on our card. It's going to be 2 Frazier. No, even. Round 7 scheduled for 10. And Willard... Really feeling he's wear, worn down the smaller Marvis Frazier. Continues to use that jab. Frazier gets inside, and Willard rips that right uppercut. And Frazier was able to stay in tight and smother it. The punch did land, but not with the oomph that Willard wanted it. Willard now hooks to the body off the pawing jab. It was a right hook. Frazier again trying to get inside, and Willard uses the hook 
to the body after the pawing jab. It seems that's his combination of choice now. Now two jabs by Jess Willard. They're scoring blows, nothing really hard. Frazier digs to the body. One of them goes to the belt line. Jess Willard having a very good round here. There's a jab and a right cross. Frazier takes a step back, then continues to march forward, dipping and diving. But he is met with a left hook to the body. Good job by Jess Willard. Both fighters wing and miss under 30 seconds to go in round seven. It's been a very good round for Jess Willard. Frazier looking to land, and he bangs to the body at the bell. Willard down to seven endurance points. Frazier continues to seem very, very tired in his corner. Papa Joe telling Marvis, you can do it, son. You can do it. Ringside score has this fight dead even after seven. We have Willard up by one. Round eight scheduled for 10. There's the bell, and Jess Willard again takes control. Jab right hand. Willard getting very comfortable with throwing these two punch combinations. On occasions, he'll throw more. Still likes to load up with that uppercut. There's a toe to toe exchange. Grazing punches for both pugilists, but scoring. Willard looking the sharper of the two. Now Marvis lands the looping right hand on the tall giant known as Jess Willard. Marvis Frazier lands a jab there. Looking to land the right. Two jabs and a right hand. And Willard blinks. Steps back for a moment. Again, Willard fighting from distance. Frazier looking to bip and bop. In and out. Both fighters wing and miss. Frazier threw a big left. Hook to the head. Willard threw a right uppercut. Dangerous punch to throw from the outside. Frazier. Frazier's first. He faints. With the jab, right hook to the body, left hook to the body. Now back at distance for both pugilists. Under a minute to go, Willard lands a right hook, a lead right hook by Jess Willard. Under 30 seconds to go, and Frazier with a double left hook. Rib cage and head of Jess Willard, and that might have just stolen the round. We give Frazier round number eight. D. Scott Howard giving us an update with his Glory Days boxing. Another fine, wonderful game, my favorite tabletop sports game. That can be purchased on Sideline Strategies uh, site. Brought to you by Anthony Crooks, our good friend, Bleacher Bums Gaming. Glory Days Boxing. It flows marvelously. Highly recommend it. Card and Dice Boxing. Bring it to a tabletop near you. D. Scott Howard says, Glory Days Boxing update. Emil Griffith KOs Mark Breland. Breland, 42 seconds. At 42 seconds of the second with a big three-punch combo. Thank you for sharing that, my friend. Willard down to four endurance points. Marv is looking for his second win. They gave that round to Willard. We gave it to Frazier. So it's a very close fight. They have it two points for Willard. I think we have it one point for Willard now. Here we go. Final six minutes of combat. Round nine. There's the bell. Frazier determined. To move in and out, strike and not be hit. Let's see if he can. And he does. It's a lunging right and then a left. But he leaves himself open after scoring those grazing shots. And Willard comes back with a pawing jab that strikes Marvis right in the nose. There's still a trickle of blood under that left eye to the side of the left eye from Marvis Frazier. Jess Willard. A jab and a right hand. Good job by Jess Willard. Frazier. Took those punches well. Willard holds Frazier in place now and rips the right uppercut. And Frazier is down for a second time. Frazier is down for a second time. The count has reached five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is over. The round at the 59 second mark. That is when referee Dave Gardner reached the 10 count. Marvis Frazier would not rise. So it was the uppercut of Jess Willard that did in Smoke and Joe's son Marvis Frazier. Marvis really stepping up in competition but the matchmaker we felt it was a decent try here. You know, he had an advantage in control. Marvis did well early, but faded late. Marvis was dropped 
for the first time in the third and then as you know knocked out with his second time he was dropped he would not rise before the 10 count in the ninth. so that was a very good entertaining fight main event to come Furpo Leon Spinks 10 rounds heavyweights Furpo fought Jess Willard in reality and beat him and Marvis Frazier well this was a step up they, they we, we we wanted to see what Marvis could do he gave it his all but he was knocked out in the ninth a good showing for Marvis Frazier let's go to the reports well going into the ninth round before Jess Willard knocked out Marvis Frazier it was close Willard on the first judge 76 75 second judge had it even 76 76 third judge had it Frazier 76 75 so it was anyone's fight but Jess Willard's fist that uppercut that educated uppercut he likes to hold you in place and nail you with it and he sure did Marvis Frazier that was judge jury and executioner 59 seconds into round nine Jess Willard is the winner so he makes a successful debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. Marvis Frazier now drops to 2-1. Jess Willard is 1-0 with a knockout. Congratulations to Jess Willard. Main event coming up. Louis Firpo, the man who knocked Jack Dempsey out of the ring, takes on Neon Leon Spinks, the man who defeated Muhammad Ali in 1978 so Firpo overall record 31 and 4 with 26 KOs hails from Buenos Aires Argentina good puncher he has power of a 6 against pressure fighters his controls a 7 so that's going to be the same as Leon Spink so it's going to pretty much be off the higher 20 sided die roll I believe Leon Spinks fought way too long as he most of those losses came very he just stay, he stayed way too long Leon Spinks was a very competent heavyweight a very small heavyweight was a pressure heavyweight would give it his all every time but he faced much bigger men 26 17 and 3 with 14 knockouts his greatest wins his greatest win was over Muhammad Ali he also was it Bernardo Mercado he upset? I think it was Mercado. And that's how he got his second shot at the title. Because he beat Ali. Ali beat him in the rematch. Then he, he lost to Larry Holmes. He lost to Dwight Muhammad Kwai for the cruiserweight title. Those were his big fights. He got knocked out by Jerry uh, Harry Kotsia in a title eliminator to see who was going to fight John Tate because Tate had beat uh, uh, Kali Nozia of South Africa. And Tate would go on to beat Kotsia, 15-round decision, the other South African heavyweight. Leon Spinks hails from St. Louis, Missouri. His brother, Michael Spinks, they both won gold medals in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. Um, endurance, even at 22. Furpo, his chin goes up after round two. So Spinks, if he can take him into deep water, could have a shot here. Furpo has the edge in power, as we stated, six to three. Um, Spinks never fights elusive. One through five on the outside. Six through nine inside. Ten through twenty pressure. And that's the way Spinks fights. He likes to get on top of you and keep trying to throw and bully you back. The wild bull from Argentina, Luis Firpo, he never fights elusive either. One through six on the outside, well, he'll wing punches. Seven through 11 inside. 12 through 20, pressure, pressure, pressure. This should be an action-packed, fun fight. Spinks is 0-1 in our universe. He was stopped by Jerry Cooney via TKO. And now he'll take on the wild bull of the Pampas, Luis Firpo from Argentina. Ten rounds, heavyweights, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas, Nevada. Main event up next. 
Furpo will be in the red corner. Spinks, the blue corner. They've had their instructions. There are no questions from the Chief Seconds. We await the bell. And there it is. Referee Dave Gardner says fight. And it's Spinks who takes control. And you can see they both have even control factors. So it's going to go off the higher 20-sided die. Spinks bangs away. As he applies pressure on Furpo, he lands a lead cross and a left hook to Furpo's body. Furpo standing right in there, and Furpo bangs the body with wild hooks of Leon Spinks. Both fighters wing shots and miss. Spinks pushing Furpo back, and he lands a good combination. Again, that right and then the left of the body by Leon Spinks to Furpo. Spinks continues to have Furpo near the ropes, and he bangs away again, left, right, left. Two shots to the body, and then the left hook to the head of Luis Furpo. Furpo still on those ropes. Spinks, the smaller heavyweight between the two, is a very strong head. Oh, he dug the left hook to the body in a right uppercut, snapping the head of Luis Furpo, not the most defensive human being. Spinks keeps Furpo pinned on the ropes, continues to bang the arms and torso of Luis Furpo. We have under a minute to go, and it's a good round for Leon Spinks. Right hand, left hook, right hand. Furpo absorbing the punishment on the ropes, looking to fight off the ropes in the final moments of round one. As Furpo again throws wild left and a right hook to the body, both were to the body at the bell. That was definitely a Leon Spinks round. Furpo down to 18 endurance points, and so is Spinks. In the Furpo corner, they're telling him, as we get it through the uh, interpreter, Spanish interpreter for the Argentinian, they want him to stay off the ropes. They want him to apply the pressure. In the Spinks corner, they want him to work the jab in this round, see if he can catch Furpo coming forward. forward. The bell for round two, and it's Leon Spinks with a jab and a right cross catching Furpo. Furpo again charging towards Spinks, pulling Spinks back, and he bangs away. Jab and a right hand snapping the head of Leon Spinks, and Spinks has some swelling near the left eye. Furpo trying to take advantage. Spinks slide steps him, and Spinks lands a left hook and then a right hook to the head of Furpo. Furpo again charging forward. Dipping low and trying to throw the overhand right. He misses with the overhand right, but he digs the left hook to the body of Spinks. Spinks behind the jab. Doesn't throw the right hand, but he lands the jab. Spinks trying to keep distance at the moment. Furpo again charges forward, banging away with wild shots. Left, right to the body and a left uppercut, nailing Spinks. Furpo looking to land the big punch. Spinks looking to slow down Furpo. Lands to the body. One might have been to the belt line. Under a minute to go here in round two. Oh, and they clash heads. Referee Gardner takes a look at them. They seem A-OK. -okay. 30 seconds to go in round two, and it Spinks at the bell with a double left hook, one to the body and one to the head. Furpo blinking, but there is no blood. Good round for Leon Spinks. Furpo down to 14 endurance points. Spinks down to 16. Furpo's chin goes up to a seven. So Furpo's danger rounds are one and two. If he gets through those two rounds, you can see he gets stronger. Let's go to the ringside score. Gave round one to Spinks, round two even. I gave the first two rounds to Leon Spinks. Round three scheduled for 10. Spinks now coming out at Furpo, and it's Furpo looking to land from distance, but it's Spinks who gets in and bangs the body, jabs his way in, then digs a right to the body, and a left hook to the rib cage of Louis Furpo. Both fighters do not throw as they try to feint each other out of position. The Wild Bull, the Pampas, wings a left hook, grazing Leon Spinks, the right hand that followed missed. Now it's Spinks. In tight, bangs away, left, right, left, and a right uppercut. And Furpo, Furpo is hurt. Furpo tries to hold on to Spinks. Spinks pushes Furpo away. Spinks lands another left hook to the head and a right to the body. Good job by Leon Spinks. 
Spinks has Furpo on the ropes. Spinks banging away at the body. He is throwing very hard body shots, reminiscent of that first Ali fight where Ali lingered way too long on the ropes. Both fighters exchange, but Spinks still keeps Furpo pinned to those ropes. Under a minute to go in round three. Oh, Furpo goes to the Franks and beans. Referee Dave Gardner warns him, but this allows Furpo to move away from the ropes. Spinks right back on top of Furpo, and he lands a double left hook. Furpo is bleeding from the nose at the bell. That round goes to Leon Spinks in our eyes. We've given all three rounds to Spinks. Furpo on the stool. They attend that bloody nose in the Spinks corner. They work the end swell near the left eye. Referee Dave Gardner's mic'd up and in the chat. As referee Dave Garner says, thinking about getting Strat Baseball for $26. Yeah, it's 60% off. I'm not going to get it because I don't, last year I don't even, I don't care about that baseball season. Not the baseball season that just passed. The prior baseball season during the COVID, the shortened season. I don't care about that one. I will be getting it probably uh, this, the newer version because I won't get it right away, I don't think. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I do want the Red Sox. They had a good year. Um, they made it to the American League Championship Series, so I might get it then. But yeah, now's the time to pick up the game at 60% off. Let's go to the ringside score. Gives it to Spinks. He has Spinks two, two to Spinks, one even. I have it first three rounds for Spinks. Furpo down to 11 endurance points. Spinks down to 12. Round four, again, control factor, both 10, so it's going to go off the higher 20-sided die roll now. And it's Furpo pushing Spinks back as Spinks again tries to use the jab. And Furpo lands a wild right hand and a left uppercut on Leon Spinks. Furpo again pushing Spinks back, and again the wild right hand and left hook crashes upon the cranium of Leon Spinks and that swelling near the left eye gets worse. Furpo charging like the mad bully is. Spinks standing his ground. Spinks lands a 1-2 on the inside trying to get away from the raging Louis Furpo. Furpo wings wildly with his hooks. The right hook landed to the body. The left hook grazed the head of Leon Spinks. A good round for Furpo trying to change the tide of battle. The bull continues to charge. Right hand, left hook, right uppercut. Spinks backing up. Spinks felt those punches. Leon stands his ground again with a 1-2-3. Straight punches snapping the head of Furpo coming forward. Furpo again charges and Leon Spinks meets him with a left hook and a right cross. Furpo is bleeding from the mouth now. He has a bloody nose and a bloody mouth. Spinks has swelling which is getting worse near the left eye. Under a minute to go here in round four. It is Spinks throwing. Spinks using the jab, going back to his amateur days. He lands the jab and then the right hand. 30 seconds ago, Furpo bull, bull Spinks into the ropes, and he bangs away. Left, right, left, right, hooks, and Spinks is badly hurt, but the bell, the bell sounds at the most opportune time for Leon Spinks as Furpo was just battering Spinks against the ropes, trying to knock him through the ropes a la Jack Dempsey. When Furpo tried to take the title from the Manassa Mahler, unsuccessfully, of course, Jim L. has joined us here in Las Vegas, Nevada for this main event of Furpo and Leon Spinks. Says, Merry Christmas all. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, my friend. We give that round to Louis Furpo. Furpo down to six endurance points. Spinks down to nine. So Furpo most likely will fatigue before Spinks. Furpo has a bloody mouth and a bloody nose. Spinks is having trouble with that left eye. That swelling's getting worse. They gave that round to Furpo. Very close fight here. Very close fight. Again, our scorecards are unofficial. Here we go. Round five, midway point coming up in this 10-round heavyweight bout. Spinks takes control as they meet at ring center. And Spinks bangs away. And Spinks really digging hard to that body. And then landing a chopping right hand to the head of Furpo. Spinks standing in with Furpo. Both fighters throw and smother one another. 
Referee Gardner breaks him. Furpo lands an uppercut. It was a right uppercut, then a left hook to the body. Furpo continues to try to muscle Sphinx back, and he does with a chopping right hand. Sphinx tries to spin him, and both fighters flurry. Good toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. It was an even exchange. Both fighters felt it. About a minute and a half to go here in round number five, and Sphinx with that left hook to the body and a right hook to the head. Furpo backs up a bit, then starts to charge again, and he wings wild punches, windmilling, snapping the head of Sphinx, wild left and a right, and then a left uppercut grazes Leon Sphinx, who starts to back up. Sphinx stops to stand his ground, he moves forward, and he lands low, he lands low, and referee Gardner warns him, asks Furpo if he's okay, Furpo nods his head, and there is the bell as the ref breaks them apart, they were wrestling, and that is the end of round five. That's another close round. Furpo down to one endurance point. Spinks to four. These rounds six, seven, eight, nine, and ten will determine the fight. Let's go to the ringside scorer. Gave that round to Spinks. I saw Spinks in round five also with a slight edge. SGJ Jamie says, I watched a few video clips of Furpo, and what I saw, he fought more like a wrestler than a boxer. Yeah, he was the wild bull of the Pampas. Pampas. You know, the uh, wild bull from Argentina. I think it's called Pamp Pampas. Where they, that's where they graze their cattle, I think, right? Very strong physical fighter. Here we go, round number six. And it's the Wild Bull banging away. Right cross, left hook. Spinks trying to get in tight. Furpo just winging punches. Again, wild punches. Grazing shots. Spinks looks to counter, and he does with a good right hand. Spinks now gets inside. Furpo pushes him away, but Spinks was able to land a grazing left uppercut. Spinks... Continues to apply pressure. Furpo wants to keep a little distance to land those looping punches, but Spinks hooks to the body with a left and right. Furpo now throws a good lead cross. Spinks ducks under the jab. Oh! Spinks ducked under. Dug the left to the body, right uppercut. And Furpo is first. Furpo goes into the ropes. Spinks looking to bang, and he bangs hard to the body. Left, right, left. They tie up. Furpo still on the ropes. The larger Furpo being muscled by Sphinx. Referee Gardner breaks them. 30 seconds to go in round six. And it's Sphinx punching at the ball. Bell, excuse me, not at the balls. He's already done that. Right cross to the jaw of the Argentinian. And then a hard left to the Bulls' ribcage. Furpo is very tired in his corner. His control factor goes to an 11. His defense, which is non-existent, stays at a one. His power drops to a four. Spinks is also tired. So it's still even Stevens when it comes to control factor. Furpo has five TKO points against him. He's granted seven. Spinks has seven TKO points. And he's on uh, uh, two, T, two, two TKO points against him. He's granted seven also. So Spinks, much better the wear than the worst. Let's go to the ringside score. Gives that round to Spinks. Spinks building up a points lead here. This will be a nice victory for Leon Spinks. Round seven scheduled for ten. And it's Furpo charging out. Wings some wild punches. Was only able to land the jab, though. The right hand missed by a mile. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Both fighters breathing a bit heavy. It's Furpo who's throwing. He lands the right hand and then the left hook. Both shots to the head. And Spinks, that swelling continues to get worse around that left eye. It's going to give him problems. Furpo, he just throws punches. Spinks lands a nice one-two. Good jab and a straight right hand. In the Spinks corner, they kind of 
sense he's ahead. They want him to try to work that jab, but it's Firpo who stays on the outside then makes his charges, and right there he charged left hook to the body and then a right hook to the head by Lewis Firpo upon Leon Spinks. Firpo again with a jab, two good jabs and a right cross. Spinks blinking, that eye is giving him trouble. Both fighters do not throw. Under a minute to go here in round seven. They're looking to catch their breath here. And now at the bell, grazing punches. Grazing punches landed by both pugilists. That was a Firpo round in my opinion. Let's see if Firpo can get a second win. Firpo with four punching power. Spinks with a three punching power. Both fighters are very tired. They gave that round to Firpo unofficially. Unofficially, the ringside scorer has Spinks up by two as we approach rounds eight, nine, and ten. Nine more minutes of boxing. This fight is still up for grabs. Here's round eight. Both pugilists to fight from the outside. It looks like they're trying to catch one another coming in. And it's Spinks being first, and it is a big windmilling combination by Leon Spinks. The last punch in overhand right, and Firpo shoves Spinks away. Spinks continues to throw as he hooks to the body with the left and then the right. Good start for Leon Spinks. Firpo looking to come back. Firpo lands the looping right cross and then a left uppercut. Firpo continues to fire, and Firpo with the right hand, left hook, and another right hand to the job. Leon Spinks, and Spinks smothers Firpo. Back and forth they go. Firpo lands on the belt line. We have about a minute left in round eight. Both fighters wing right hands and miss. Both fighters faint but don't throw. Under a minute to go. It's Firpo throwing a jab. Now 30 seconds, and Firpo! Goes to the Franks and Beans, and that gets a stern warning from referee Dave Gardner. Leon Spinks walking quite gingerly back to his corner. And you can see referee Gardner continues to walk Firpo back to his corner, admonishing him. And now he goes over to the Spinks corner to see if he's all right. Spinks nods yes. They work on the left eye. That swelling continues to get worse for Leon Spinks. The Firpo corner, every time he's hit, the blood comes from the nose and the mouth. It is a rough and tumble profession, this profession called boxing. Six more minutes. Firpo might have took that round. Both fighters winged hard, but were able to stand up to the punches. Leon Spinks' will goes down to a three, chin goes down to a four. Firpo's chin goes down to a six. Remember, it increased to a seven after two rounds. And his will went down to a seven. I gave that a Firpo round. They gave it even. Six more minutes to go. The unofficial score at ringside. Louis Firpo, 76. Leon Spinks, 78. Here we go. Round nine, scheduled for 10. And it's Spinks trying to apply the pressure. Firpo looking to catch him coming in. But Spinks lands grazing punches. Firpo, a very strong man, shoves Spinks away. Both fighters yet to throw a significant punch. They're waiting, they're waiting, but they're not throwing. And now it's Furbo as he hooks to the body with the left hand. A wide right hand cups Spinks to the back of the head. Spinks gets inside, bangs away, left right to the body, and then a left hook to the head. Good job by Leon. Furbo pushes Spinks away and lands a right hand and then a left to the body. A minute to go in round nine. Furbo's punching. Firpo lands the cross, he leads with the cross, and then again digs the left to the body of Leon Spinks. Spinks evades the jab, and he comes up throwing! Left hook, right hand, left hook! And Firpo is hurt! Firpo is hurt! He's in the center of the ring trying to hold on! Spinks is punching with a left, right, left, and there's the bell! Oh boy, Firpo is badly hurt. Spinks takes that round. Spinks in our eyes is three minutes from victory. If he can stand up, if he can avoid a knockdown, he will win a decision, we believe. What a job by Leon Spinks. His control goes up to 12. Power drops to a two. So Furpo will have a control advantage in these final three minutes. 
Referee Gardner brings them to ring center. A bloody furpo, blood from the nose and lips. And a swollen left eyed Sphinx touch gloves. Here we go, final three minutes. Let's check out the ringside score. He has Sphinx ahead by three points. If Sphinx stands up, he wins. Here's the bell. And it's Furpo. And it's Furpo banging hooks to the body. Sphinx looking to come back. His corner wants him to stay outside. He's trying to work that jab. He jabs, then he goes right hook to the body of Furpo. Furpo looks to land long, looping, hard punch. And oh, my Lord! Left uppercut, graze Spinks, and the right hand crashes upon his jaw. And Spinks is badly hurt. Furpo looking for that miracle, and Furpo lands another right left. Furpo has Spinks trapped on the ropes, measuring him with that jab. Furpo still measures with the jab. Spinks trying to fight off the ropes. Spinks jabs back. Spinks has no legs. Under a minute to go. Furpo has a chance. Furpo lands a 1-2. 30 seconds to go. They tie up. The bell. Referee Gardner breaks them. Oh, Furpo had Spinks in a world of hurt but could not drop Neon Leon Spinks. Furpo will take round 10. But we have on our card Spinks winning this fight by two points. The ringside scorer has Spinks winning by... Wow, they gave Spinks the 10th round. I don't know how, but they did. They have Spinks up by four. Now we go to the three blind mice, the judges at ringside. How did you see it? Referee Dave Gardner has collected the scorecards from the Nevada State Athletic Commission judges. Goes over it with them. And now... Gives them to the ringside announcer. We await the decision. We have Spinks by two points. We have a unanimous decision. 96-94, 98-94, Your winner by unanimous decision from St. Louis, Missouri, Neon Leon Spinks. So Spinks' decision, the wild bull of the pampas, the man from Argentina, from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Luis Furpo. A good, good win for Leon Spinks. He is now 1-1 one one in the universe. That's a good win coming off his TKO loss to Jerry Cooney. Furpo is 0-1. Furpo showed power. Neither pugilist went down. They both showed some good power in this bout. But Spinks just dug a little deeper. So in our first bout, Jess Willard in a very fun, exciting fight with Marvis Frazier and Willard deadlocked in a draw. One judge had it Willard, one judge had it even, the other judge had it Frazier. But the final judge was Jess Willard's right uppercut and he knocked out Marvis Frazier as referee Dave Gardner reached the 10 count, 59 seconds into round nine. So Jess Willard makes a successful debut in our Legends of Boxing universe. Leon Spinks picks up his first win with a unanimous decision points victory we just witnessed over Louis Furpo. Furpo's debut not as good as Willard's. He loses. I'd like to thank SGJ Jamie. Thank you very much. He says, wow, exciting finish. With a near miss. It was. These are very fun fights. I enjoy all my boxing games. I love Glory Days Boxing. I really enjoy Legends of Boxing on the PC. I like Title Belt, Champion, uh, title belt Championship Boxing on the PC. Title Belt 2 on the PC. We're going to get back to Title Belt Championship Boxing. And try to get back to our heavyweight tournament. I found the spreadsheet. Just want to make sure everything's A-OK -okay with the game. Uh, great value for that game, Title Belt Championship Boxing. $13 formerly was uh, part of the Out of the Ballpark universe. You can still buy it. And it's for thir for just over $13, marvelous game. Text based with you read. You can actually play a fighter. Um, they have every fighter. So it's good use if you have like Title Bout and you can, Title Bout 2, you can make your own fighters. You can use that as a reference point. Legends of Boxing, you cannot make your own fighters, which stinks. It'd be fun, even if you could just make fictional fighters. You can do it in career mode a little bit, 
but I like to make fictional fight. You know, like I like to make a whole Looney Tunes roster because I find that fun. Um, I enjoyed my little Bugs Bunny uh, career. I still have it going. I don't play it online as much because he fought Elmer Fudd. Who can he fight after that? You know what I mean? <laughs> if he gets the world title, we'll have him fight He Man or something. So thank you to SGJ Jamie, Dave Gardner. Check out his wonderful channel. Of course, Digital, Digital to Dice on Spreaker with Ron Juckett. Uh, Jim L., thank you very much. D. Scott Howard, the Goat Whisperer, thank you. Highlight Heyday, please check out and subscribe to that. Another wonderful, fun channel. Sox Arizona, thank you very much. Check out his channel and subscribe for Red Sox and Celtics games live with the chat. And I missed someone. Oh, our good friend, Steeler Fan 1933, Matt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the baseball and boxing tonight. If you enjoyed the stream, smack that like button. If you're not a subscriber and you want to be a subscriber, please do so. And if you do subscribe, hit the bell for notification when we go live. And you can enjoy our live events along with the wonderful people in the chat. The FOC, friends of the channel, friends of the community. We have lots of cool stuff coming up as always. Um, greatly appreciate your time. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year coming up in case I don't see you. But we'll be back. And any happy whatever holidays you celebrate. Hanukkah. Kwanzaa, be nice, treat people the way you want to be treated. God bless, stay safe, be smart. Till next time, peace. Love you all. See you again. Bye-bye.